Hello everyone. This is Shiraz Ahmed Khan. Today we are here to solve task 13b of the book. Before we start this task, let's recall that what did we learn last time during the task 13a. If you recall, we learned last time how to create a blank document in Microsoft Word. We learned how to open an existing document in Microsoft Word. We saw the differences between RTF and CSV files. We learned how to save as an RTF file as a word process document. We also learned how to copy and paste the text from CSV file into a word processed document. Viewers, today, after the completion of this task, we would be able to do cut paste. We learn how to insert a blank line wherever we want in our document. We'll also learn how to make modifications in the already typed text. And finally, we'll learn how to find and replace word or words with another word or words. So let's start this task. The very first action of this task is to open the file that we saved last time. That was task 13a. Once again, let me tell you that there are two methods to open an existing word processed document. One method is to start MS Word first and then open the already saved document. And the other method is to go to the path where you saved your file and double click onto that file or document to open it in Microsoft Word. So let's open the document that we saved last time. And if you remember, we saved task 13A in our source files folders for chapter 13. Double click chapter source files folder. Double click chapter 13. And here we have task 13a dot doc x. Double click it. It will be open in Microsoft Word. So here we have the task that we saved last time. Next thing is to move the last sentence in the document so that it becomes the last sentence in the first paragraph. Here I want to highlight the difference between copy and cut. One more thing regarding these two actions is that they both are considered incomplete without paste. We can say that paste is a must that is required for cut and copy. The difference between these two is that we copy the text and paste it somewhere else at some other location of our document to have the replica of the original text. And in order to move the stuff from one point or from one place of our document to another place of our document, we use cut option. So here we are asked to move the last sentence. So in this case, we are not going to use copy. We are going to cut the last sentence of the document and we'll paste it at the end of the first paragraph. So let's do it. Here you can see that the last sentence is starting from this point up to this dot after the word closed. In order to cut the text, First of all, select the text. 
once the selection is done there are different methods of cutting this text one method is to right click with the help of mouse you can see this cut option and the second method is the shortcut key to cut this text and the shortcut key of cutting the text is control x just after pressing the shortcut key the text is disappeared from the screen one more thing i want to highlight here is that whenever you copy or cut something it basically goes to the clipboard clipboard is a special area in our computer that holds the cut or copied stuff so now just after pressing the shortcut key the text is disappeared from the screen and now the clipboard of this computer is having that text now we are asked to place this text at the end of the first paragraph and here we have that point where this according to the statement of this the so that it becomes the last sentence in the first paragraph so it means we are to insert it at the end of the last paragraph the first paragraph so here we have the cursor is now it's blinking just after the first paragraph and we are going to paste the text that we recently cut from our document and the shortcut key if you remember we used it during the task 13a as well the shortcut key is control v there is another method of pasting the text that is you can right click at the point where you want to paste the text and choose the paste option in the paste there are different options with the formatting will the merge formatting i'll come back to these points at some later stage so for the time being i'm using the shortcut key of pasting the text and before pasting the text we are to place the cursor at the point so the cursor is blinking there and the shortcut key is control v just after pressing this shortcut key the text started appearing just after the first paragraph let's see the next action next we have add a new subtitle school closures just above the table and add this new paragraph between the subtitle and the table so first of all we need to insert a subtitle school closures just above the table so here we have that point that is just above the table already the cursor is blinking there because we moved the text last time at this point so we want to insert a new subtitle here as i mentioned at the start of the lecture that today we'll learn how to insert a blank line basically when you press enter key at any point what as the general perception is that the cursor is moved to the next line but basically the purpose of enter key is to insert a blank line so now press enter key it will move the cursor to the next line apparently it's happening but basically a new blank line is inserted for us so we are asked to type this subtitle school closures let's type it and once again be very conscious regarding the case of these letters like s is capital in the first word and c is written in lower case for the second word so we have inserted a new subtitle school closures just above the table and we are asked to type a new paragraph between the subtitle and the table look once again there is no blank line between the table and the recently inserted subtitle so in order to have a blank line in between these two objects place the cursor at the end of the subtitle 
and press the enter key to insert a new line there. Now start typing this paragraph that is starting from the dramatic change in the weather has meant that a number of areas are experiencing transport problems. This means that many schools across the country have been closed. If you remember last time, I highlighted this very common mistake by the students that they start considering these single quotes while typing the text. Basically, the stuff is enclosed in single quotes just to keep it different from rest of the statements of the question. So type this paragraph. And once the paragraph is typed, the next step is in the third paragraph, change the word was to is. This can be done very easily as far as this task is concerned that we are asked to replace the word was with is and was you can find it in the third paragraph. But at this point, I want to add something that we can perform the same action otherwise as well. In the third paragraph, we have the third paragraph is starting from this point. We, the third paragraph is here we have this third paragraph. First of all, we are to find the word was from third paragraph and here we have that word and we are asked to replace it with the word is. At this point, I want to share something with you that as far as this task is concerned, it's, it seems to be very easy to replace this word was with is. But let's learn, suppose if you have lots of pages in your document and you want to replace one word or the occurrence of that word more than one times in your document. So there is another method of doing this. Place the cursor at the start of the document and, and let's see how the second method it works. There is an option in Microsoft Word to find and replace a word or more than one word with another word or more than one words. So the shortcut key to replace the text with another text is Control H. Just after pressing this shortcut key, this dialog box will appear. We call it find and replace dialog box. First of all, we are to enter that what do we want to find? That is was. And secondly, if you press the tab key, it will take you to the next text box that is replace with. So we want to replace was with is. Here we have different buttons. First of all, we are interested to find the occurrence of the word was. So click the find next and let's see. It's taking us to the first occurrence of the word was and we are not interested to replace this occurrence of the word was with is. So click find next again. It's taking us to the second occurrence. Keep clicking it until you reach at the point that is that we are asked to replace with is. So here we have that place, the third occurrence of the word was. Finally, when it is reached, when the desired location is reached and when the desired word is selected, replace it with the word is with the help of this option that is replace. Once it's clicked, it will prompt us with this message. Click OK and finally close this dialog box. So viewers, this way we learned how to replace text with another text, a word with another word or few words or a paragraph with another few words or another paragraph by using the inbuilt option that is find and replace. Now the last 
step of this task is to add the word has between counties and reported. Once again, the word counties and reported, they are not highlighted that where these words are. Once again, as far as this document is concerned, because it's not richer enough, as far as the text is concerned, you can find it manually. But once again, you can use the find and replace dialog box. So press it again. Just after pressing Control F, this time the navigation bar, it's appearing in the left pan. We are interested to find the word counties. So type the word counties here. And look, automatically the cursor is moved there and control is shifted from start of the document to the first occurrence of the word counties. So what is demanded in the task? That place the word has between the counties and reported. So here we have the occurrence of that word counties and we want to place another word has between counties and reported. Place the cursor just after the word counties, press spacebar and start typing the word has. Viewers, uh, task 13b, it's almost done. And the last step as we performed during the task 13a, it is to save the document as task 13b. So it's task 13a in which we have been working since the start of this video lecture. So now we are going to save as this task this time just with the new name and there is no need to change the type of the document. So if you remember the shortcut key to save as the document is F12 or the second method is file click save as option once again we are to choose the path that way do we want to save the file already the current folder it's being displayed here so you can double click this option and this time replace the file name with task 13b yesterday we were working in an rtf file so we had to change the save as type, but today it's already a Word document in which we started working, that was task 13a. So there is no need to change the save as type today because it's already a Word process document. Finally, click the save button. You can make sure that the file is saved with the new name by looking at the title bar of Microsoft Word which is currently showing task 13b.docx. That's it for today. Task 13b, it's completely done. So before leaving, let's recapitulate that what did we learn today. Today we learned the use of cut and paste. We learned the use of enter key that we use it to insert a blank line anywhere in the document. We learned the use of find and replace dialog box along with the navigation pan that appear, appears on the, in the left side of the document. And we also learned how to save as the Word document without changing the save as type. Have a good day ahead. Thank you very much for watching the 